All right, I'm just pretty sure. All the nerds know. Yeah, I think we're live. I think we're there. Hello, nerds. Yes. Oh, nerds and trolls. <laughs> the nerds, the trolls, the neurodivergents. <laughs> We've always got a lot of them around. The good what, people what, of what, America. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Dude, I haven't been on our TikTok in so long. Speaking of nerds, I mean, it's probably going to go the way of the dinosaur if. Uh... No, but apparently, I, I actually looked into it and it's going to go through a lengthy amount of lawsuits. It's still, it would still take a long time. That's a good. few years. Yeah. That's good. Which, I mean, that bill was straight stupid. Oh, yeah. It's really dumb. <laughs> and the other one oh, yeah, that they pass cool. with it. But of course yeah, we have we just... have to like you know we gotta fear monger China even though we trade with them like a, a majority of our imports are coming from there now. Yeah, we, I mean right. to be honest, we literally couldn't do this show without China. So thanks China for sponsoring the underground. <laughs> yeah. China's so bad we do business with. <laughs> oh uh, boy, man, bunch of, bunch of neurodivergence, <laughs> bunch of neurodivergence in Congress, huh? <laughs> yeah, oh, exactly. Man, bunch of neurodivergent puppets. <laughs> Few aren't, man. Few aren't. Yeah, so funny, dude. It really is, dude. We could do a if we still had our social episode. Just imagine that. Imagine how much <laughs> fun that would be. Ay, ay, ay. Um, I'm sure yeah. my keeper's happy that we no longer do that. Yeah, you know, I mean, we mention it on here every once in a while. I think that that's good enough. We don't have to. It go bleeds into, over. It does bleed occasionally. Yes. Um, I would actually like to, um, and maybe this falls more in line with the social, but because uh, we used to cover that stuff when we did the social, but more the churchy stuff and everything. Yeah. Um, that I was don't always, know. I, I, I like, always enjoyed that. I, so <laughs> I guess I'm, I'm going to keep some of this vague, but I had a conversation uh, with someone recently about Andy Stanley. Um, mm -hmm. And to be honest, What's I'd their like, ASL. <laughs> <laughs> um i uh for all you, you young kids back in the day on i am yeah on instant messenger the um uh the th i was asked about it, like a bunch of sp like uh speakers and andy stanley was on that list and i was like well i don't know most of them but i knew him and i'm like i don't remember the exact details of the like quote unquote controversy but I was like, he he does a lot of things now um, that that people would find. I was like trying to be gentle about it, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, you know, the, the, people find a lot of the things that he says now controversial and or not biblical. Um, and uh, I was like, you know, I was like, I can't give you like the full details at this point because I haven't been like diving into that for a long time. And there's part of me that's like. I'm kind of happy that's the case. Kind of the same way, like, I'm not spending a lot of my time on, like, politics or, like, dumb... I mean, sometimes we talk about, like, really dumb, uh, like, like, social stuff or whatever. Um, yeah. You, you know, know, the cure for that is it's being off of social media. Yeah, yeah, that helps a lot. Um, and... Don't get me wrong, like, I guess it, for me at this point, I'd rather just have those conversations in the moment instead of just, like, with those specific people be like, nah, you know, like, I just have my problems with them. And if they want to continue that conversation, like, I'm, I'm fine with it. Um, or I might even tell them, like, well, it's been a while, let me, like, refresh my memory. Because um, there's, there's just certain things... Um, that I'm not as familiar with anymore, you know? It's, like, impossible to know, like, all Everything. the details or whatever. And it's, it's kind of the same way with, like, movies and stuff. Like, if I haven't seen something in a long time, I'll be like, well, this is kind of how I felt about it at the time, or at least what I thought of it at the time, but I was like, that could change um, on a more recent viewing, just, you know, kind of with the things that I know now and the way that I look at stuff. Um, so... Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. It's sometimes just leaving things vague and open ended to allow them to give you the authority. Yeah. Also, there's sometimes where you get so long winded when you respond to someone that you're like, "Should I have 
have said oh, all dude. that. People, been, listen, like, I uh, people's eyes glaze over thirty seconds after you start something. So like, if you can't, yes. if you can't catch them in that thirty seconds, that's why. Like, I, and I don't mean to. It's not out of I. I don't. It, it, you know, whether we're it's movies or television or you know church related stuff or whatever the case may be, like most people nowadays their attention spans are so bad you've got a good 20 to 30 seconds before they've just lost all interest that was off yep um, no you're exactly right there are and it reminds me but when i give answers like that it reminds me of that mitch hedberg joke where he was talking about his friend said to him man this weather is trippy and then he was like i replied to him and said perhaps it's not the weather that's trippy it's the way we perceive it that is indeed trippy and then i thought Man, I should have just said yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, the, yeah. I, I feel well, that way so. Many I, times. I do that so much now, man, because like there just aren't there aren't a lot of people that want to. They they just don't care. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it's picking and choosing too, um, and I think I've just <laughs> you know knowing what to engage in. Yeah. And, and what to say, dude? I'm um, speaking of knowing what to engage in. I got triggered today at work. Um, a coworker of mine said that they liked uh, the Halo show. Oh like, no! Oh, oh, that's I so can get bad, you dude. fired. I don't even know it, dude. Well, and that's the thing is, like, some people people don't typically ask, but like somebody asked me about uh, Fallout recently. They're like, "Oh, have you watched Fallout?" And I was like, "Yeah, it kind of sucked." <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, you could tell that they were like a little uncomfortable by that because everybody is just like in love with it. And, um, in my opinion on it has like gotten worse, I think over the last few weeks. Um, I, you know, it wasn't incredible at first, but some of the, some other stuff was like kind of pointed out to me or I was like reminded of some stuff from it. And I was like, dang man, this is bad. <laughs> it's like, this yeah. is not, it's just, and it's well, cool. It's cool if people like it. Like I, I think, we have to it's it's dumb that we have to keep repeating that but it's like it's cool if you like it but it's not very good like this isn't what we should be striving for at yeah. all um, exactly i was talking to someone about uh shogun actually yeah and i was like you know i really really enjoyed this the the season it's a really good re really great series um, really great show and because you know he was asking me yeah. Like, yeah i got three episodes left and i've um. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure how much I'm looking forward to him because I haven't had a big battle yet. <laughs> oh, whoops. Well, this that's a, a that's you know, an expectation. You know what I mean? Sure, and that's an well, expectations thing to some degree. It's like you aren't the show set. I, I mean, that I would it? argue the show set. Okay, but I, I told them. I told them. I, I don't. Like, Look, I don't know. If episode that's really nine. True. I know we can argue about uh, it later. Though. I don't. I think you're. I think it's. I think it's an expectation versus. You know what I mean? Like you're not. Well, it ended anticlimactically, <laughs> and I didn't. I don't. I'm like, I don't want to spoil anything. I just want to say there's ten episodes. You already know this. Episode nine, yeah. the best out of the last three. Yeah. So ten isn't bad. It's still a good episode. I wouldn't disagree that nine. Nine is definitely. I mean, nine is potentially the best one in the series. But a lot yeah, of that is right. because it, everything kind of builds up to that. But I, I mean, I, I get the, I get the position. I, I think there are a lot of like them, episode nine. There are a lot of people who be disappointed best out of with the 10. last three episodes. Yeah, and then episode ten, I, I was just trying to fi figure out a way to vaguely say it ends anticlimactically. Yeah, I, I feel was like, like just don't get your hopes too high. <laughs> yeah, don't expect some. <laughs> but that honestly, it's. Uh, it's an expectation that's set by other things, not necessarily by Shogun. I right. think it's really easy to argue that because that's what Game of Thrones constantly did. Well, and you know what I mean. It was like bigger argument. battles and bigger and bigger set pieces, yeah. and and people want people want that all the time. And then it's like, uh, like that's well, why it has to make it has to make sense. I think yeah. for me, my argument was I thought the battle should have been there because, as I said last week, we don't have to rehash sure. it. It was just that, like, to be able to see Tornaga confront something he like one of his plans doesn't go exactly the way he wants to and he has to confront something he w was striving not to confront the entire season you know really leaning more towards not spilling a drop of blood okay now we have to uh, confront this issue but i actually um speaking of game of thrones i was speaking with someone else about episode nine of game of thrones and when 
Rainies came out on the dragon because they were like, yeah. they really loved it. It was so great. Oh, and I'm no. Like, really? Bro. I thought it didn't make a lot of sense. And they're like, how? And I'm like, well, she she escapes and she murders a bunch of civilians, number one. Number two, she has the opportunity to kill, you know, all of them right there. Boom. And, and this whole thing is done. And, you know, they say, yeah, but, you know, she didn't want to. She didn't want to be the first one to kill. I'm like, well, she already disregarded Dude, she, that when she yeah, killed she, the civilians now you can make the argument that. <laughs> well they were like well she doesn't care about the subjects and any and, and people there i'm like okay so then it was right for her not to have gotten to the throne and, and it was better for viserys to get the throne then if that's how the way that she treats she is a mass people. she's a mass murderer yes at that point well she doesn't care about the subjects oh, okay okay and this is the this is the the problem um and, you know, when you talk to people, they, they, they throw a lot of the time people throw arguments out without considering like the show. Yeah. And like, what, not only what we have been, the information that we've been given through watching it, but like that, the idea of her busting through that and murdering all of those uh, people in there and then being like, well, she doesn't care about him. And then it's like, well, like you said, it's like, well, then, uh, Viserys is, or not Viserys, what's the, then he should, like, it basically means that Alicent is right and that her son should be on the throne. Yeah. That's kind of the direction that it goes because, like, you're going to turn, like, the minute, like, oh, gosh, uh, people, I, I don't know how this is so disconnected from reality. Like, I understand that it, it, it's that same argument we've always had with people. It's like, yes, I understand this is fiction, but it's like, they're people, like, flesh and blood people internal, who think like people. Yeah. Yep. And if you were in a situation where, you know, you're just this civilian and someone, a giant dragon busts out of the ground and like murders your friends and your family and the people who live next to you. Whoever that person supports, you're probably not going to be too fond of, you know, probably not, probably not, probably not. I know the people of Late Town weren't too fond of uh, also, smog, smag, smog, smog, smog. Yeah, Smaug. Uh, and speaking of Smaug, uh, big uh, hell to the victorious dead to the passing of oh, um, yeah. King Theoden. Bro. I was, that man, I don't typically get sad about people dying. That one got me. 79, man. Yeah. Mm. Well. 79. Bernard for, here, Hill. He, uh, he definitely... You know, I, I think that despite all that, it's like what a legacy to leave with with uh, those uh, with that role. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's what he'll be known for. And oh, like, he, dude, and how man. he didn't win a Oscar for that role, dude. Yeah. Like the acting that he portrayed through both movies, yeah, just superb. I there's yeah. a lot of people in those movies that should have won Oscars. I mean, honestly, yeah. the Lord of the Rings, uh, all three of those movies got snubbed too hard. Oh, I checked absolutely. It on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they didn't want to award anything. Mm. Um, also, hello to uh, Jenna in the troll room as well as uh, Wooba Troopa. It's good to see oh, you guys. Speaking, speaking of Jenna, uh, Jenna, um, you know, I didn't realize your sibling was a doctor as I saw Doctor Jenna Tolls um, out on Twitter. <laughs> Uh, so, tell your 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 sister I said hello. All right, it's man. Kind of funny. Well, um, I'm okay. So before we get started, because we actually haven't really talked about this, is the Fall Guy the only one of? I was gonna say three. It's technically only two. Um, was that the only one that you ended up watching? Yeah, that was the okay. only one. That's I fine. Could. Um, so. I'm just going to do, let me do just like a quick rundown um, of yeah. two movies, actually. Ooh. Uh, I, well, oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. We got to talk about Superman real fast. Though. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Go for it. And then we'll okay. get into this. Okay. What did you think about the Superman release of uh, his reveal oh, of his costume? Oh, uh, wow. Uh, well, I you sent me that thing that Nina Infinity put out there that was like, it's an effeminate pose or whatever, and I'm like, bro, he's just this putting is, on his boots. 
<laughs> yeah, this, she said, I figured out why the new Superman image seems off because it's an infeminate pose. That's it's not, not a good what pose it is. For a man yeah. that's supposed to be the of everything, the everything you like all the things to criticize. Of all the things to criticize. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. Like I just like I think I, I just told you trying way too hard to be negative about that. We um obviously are fine with people criticizing the image. It is well within your right to do so. Um I I kind of don't care at least it's like 50% you know because it's like okay uh, I, I'm like I don't I don't know I was like I don't have context for this I'm like the suit is not exactly what I I, I don't know like there's stuff that's weird about it it, it the picture seems too costuming to it, me it definitely, like yeah it, it, everything it's about baggy, it, it's, it, it's the whole it seems, picture is staged too in a way that yeah. makes me I'm just like I don't know man like I don't have context for like what's going on in the background. Like I, I don't know why this is an image that they would want to put out. Like just build anticipation for the trailer. Like let's just do that. <laughs> it's such an event, dude. Though. That cracked me up so good. I'm like, what? Yeah, I was just like, <laughs> mm, it, on his shoe. It, it was definitely a stretch. I get it though. Um, I get it. Like he's supposed to be Superman. Why are they showing him as the first image release? Like putting, him, on him putting on his shoes or whatever and yeah, uh, and here's the deal is like myself well here's the thing is that I'll, and i okay um <laughs> this is a bit just follow with me for a second so okay i because i was reading some of the comments um in there uh like under that post and some people were agreeing and other people were disagreeing and some people were going from this idea of like oh well he's supposed to be like a demigod why would you show a demigod putting on his shoes and i'm like because it's superman he's clark clark kent is is part of him like he's a he's a normal dude and that is a big piece of him and he also is quote unquote a demigod like he is a hero he's the most like powerful being on earth um you want both i don't under like why why would it be it why would it be a problem for him to, for there to be any sort of scene where he's putting the suit on like why does that all of a sudden make him like less of who he is like you, you do still to some degree want to be able to connect to that character. Um, so I just I found it really weird that it was like, wait, like hang on, like super Superman isn't like supposed to be this unobtainable character. Like you're supposed to be able to relate to him. Like yep. that's that's a complete part of it. Like, but he is an unattainable that, character. That, that's that like, they're trying to make relatable. You right. Know what I mean, it, it'd be this. It, it it's a weird criticism because you don't say that like even thor because i was about to be like well he's not thor but then i'm like no like you want to be able to relate to thor like there are going to be things it's just so weird like yep. he's not an emotionless like killing machine like yeah i don't ah uh, like i it's just a weird it's a weird argument um and then i i mean it's fine if you think the picture looks effeminate like i just i don't know man like i, I feel I like that's, that's digging a, a little too deep to, to go for for yeah, and I'm not looking. I mean, listen, I you know, just I like lifting up his foot. Yeah, he's just he's just putting a boot on, man. Like, kind of, it looks pretty normal to me. Um, yeah. I, I was like, Dad, I guess I'm a feminine too. I know. I and well, I sent you, well. I sent you a message back though. I was like, I was like, guys, is putting on boots gay? That's <laughs> <laughs> the weirdest. Oh, are you a homosexual I, for I, putting on your I, boots? Right, and I, I totally get like. It not being a good pose potentially if you wanted to go there and stuff. I'm not really gonna sure. Care about it that it's much. not the picture. I, it's not the direction I would have gone. But like, yeah. let's be let's be clear about this too. Um, this is still the decisions that they're making in trying to relaunch DC. Yep. These are the decisions they're making. So yes, it from there are angles that you take that make sense when you're like, hmm, it is a little. It's a little weird that this is what they decided. To, to start with like mm, don't really know how i feel about that suit so much like why does he not seem you know there's there seems to be some sort of alien or something going on in the background that needs his attention like why is he uh you know why is he doing this and i also yeah. understand from the perspective of like traditionally i think the superman you don't typically see him change right because he, he does it really fast but i'm pretty sure that was always for like edit's sake as well you know what i mean because I, I don't really want to see him change into the suit necessarily. You know, he's not Batman where you get to do like a little montage of him like putting on the suit. 
Like yeah. super, Superman has the ability to just be like boom, boom, putting on the like, red tights. Yeah, yeah. I don't. It, it is weird. It's, it's, it's all chaps weird. until he puts on the red tights. Yeah, it's the uh, the effeminate angle that she took. I was just like, okay, yes. like hmm. that's why I was like, like mm, that's, that's a bit odd. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully, it ends up being good. I'm I'm I'm, I'm waiting to see the trailer because I think with this rendition. This is either going to help bring DC back up. Obviously, that goes without saying. But the the other side of this is if this doesn't get nailed, oh, it's going to kill DC for a while, for a long time. Uh, uh, Jenna was saying that Superman might be going public domain soon. So maybe they're trying to do something Mm. different with him. Who knows? Really? That'd be awesome. Well, it'll be a. I, I imagine it'll be a specific rendition, sort of like Mickey Mouse did. But I don't think it's. Yeah. You know, and Winnie the Pooh is in the public domain, but you're only uh, able to do certain things. Yeah, like early comics. Um, that's yeah. cool, though. That's cool. Still. Maybe maybe people can do some early comic stuff and make some good stories, and we can get out yeah, of this like, a lot of this garbage. Um. All right, tell me about Boy Kills World. Okay, well, I'm not sorry. Killing the world. Well, we have to talk about Nicolas Cage first. Okay. Um, All right. Our, What's up with Nicolas Cage? Our, is this about the uh, producer or whoever, that company that never messaged us back to see him kill no, Bison? No, different movie. Um, okay. So I uh, was in Atlanta this weekend and got home yesterday and was just kind of chilling. And um, they were doing uh, server updates for Final Fantasy XIV. So I was like, well, I guess uh, it's like I'm not tired. But I was like, well, maybe I'll watch a movie. And um was like, oh, yeah, that new Nicolas Cage horror movie, Arcadian, uh, was released uh, recently on streaming, and so I um, decided to sit down and watch it. Uh, and hopefully, we won't get uh, nicked for these trailers. Otherwise, I'll have to stop this. But <clears throat> um, I thought it was all right. Um, Nick Cage isn't in it nearly enough, uh, and that's not like a spoiler. He just gets hurt about halfway through the movie, and um, it's like more about his sons. And it's got like a little bit of what's that. The, so, what's the movie about? So, uh, it's basically the end of the world, and he has found these two babies and raises them, and you get a glimpse into their life surviving in a world that is overrun with. It's a creature. It's a creature feature. So there are these okay. creatures. Um, and I'm not going to spoil it because I will say, like, if you're like into creature films or you like uh because like spooky's probably it, it's eerie like it's it's like definitely quiet place. it's got some quiet place vibes to it um not thankfully um the mechanics of this movie are not hurt nearly as much as it is in a quiet place i'm um, like there's a lot of stuff in a quiet place that if you think too much about it it's like this doesn't really work very well um mm. just a lot of like nonsense that is done in a quiet place in order to uh like get them where they like get the story where it needs to go um and this doesn't have as much of that it's pretty simple simple setup simple character developments and um a pretty cool creature uh and i'll i'll say this there is a specific scene about halfway through the movie that is just It's just very well executed. It, nice. It's just this one moment um, that I was like, okay, I really, really liked that. Um, and, you know, we've talked before about, like, ungentlemanly warfare, and we're going to, you know, talk about Boy Kills World and The Fall Guy, and this is that realm of movies that hit sort of that five, six, seven range on the scale for me yeah. that I'm like, more of this, please. Like, I don't, I don't need Godzilla minus one all the time, but like, give me something that I that I can like go. Oh yeah, you know, I really like that. I was like, that movie was just all right, but there were these things in there that I'm like, this is really cool, and I really appreciate like the creature design in this. It's weird. Um, they do a pretty good job of holding off showing it to you um, until pretty late in the film, and the movie's only about an nice. hour and a half, so it. It goes, you know what I mean? Like, you're not, for the most part, like, I, I wasn't sitting around being like, oh, okay, you know, and there's all these weird things, and so it, for a pretty simple, like, creature feature, it does a really good job of building you up um, 
to where stuff starts popping off. Um, nice. And, you know, it kind of keeps you guessing a little bit. Um, it's got some problems, for sure. Uh, especially in the last, like, like the third act or so. Uh, there's some odd choices uh, f- from, like... There's like a uh, one character choice in particular, and then there's this one moment towards the very end of the movie where I was like, "Hmm, that was weird. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense." Um, but overall, like, not bad, not bad. So you would say a good popcorn flick, like? Oh movie. yeah, yeah, yeah. If you like, if you kind of are into these kinds of movies, um, I think that uh, you'll probably enjoy this. Uh, it was nice to see a movie where Nick Cage is like acting seriously. Like he's pretty serious through the entire thing nice yeah no like i mean it doesn't it didn't really come off goofy to me um oh by the way stooge i think i found a way to remove the reactions on your live stream Ooh, sorry i got distracted by whoopa the troll room uh, no you're fine whoopa D- dm me about that um on discord if you think yep. you know how and people are the troll rooms asking do you not like a quiet place um not so much no uh, it's yeah. it, my opinion of that movie has definitely gone downhill over the years, um, mm-hmm. and a lot of it is just because it falls into a lot of the same issues that um, a lot of the stuff we talk about does. Where it's like just you just can, don't like anything. Just, I know I just don't like anything. <laughs> it, it's very con- it, there's a lot of convenience in a quiet place, um, yeah. and let let's be real. Like there's this whole thing where like there's a waterfall, and it's been we've been told that it's a safe place for them. Like, the creatures won't go there because they can't hear them. Uh, and yet, when uh, Emily Blunt is having the baby, they're like, no, we'll just stay on the farm where the baby will scream and be heard. And for yeah. some unknown reason, Emily Blunt doesn't have, like, a hard labor pregnancy, you know? Yeah. Um, there's just some stuff in it that's like, mm. Convenient. Yeah, it's just a lot of convenience, you know? Mm- can't be as like, convenient mm, as King and King Kong versus Godzilla. Probably not. No. Um, or as convenient as the it's not Lady as, Hey, listen, it's not, it's not as one. bad as it's not as bad as Damsel. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's not saying much. Trust me, I've seen it, and I know people who like it. Oh, Jenna said, since becoming a father, I find myself being easier on movies with good family representation in it. Yeah, you know what's so funny is like I. I understand that, but like I'm, wait, I'm soft on Jenna's that. a dude. <laughs> I'm soft on some of that too. Um, there's actually like, like I think Nick Cage has a pretty good fatherly representation uh, in Arcadian, and then at the beginning of Fallout, that's how I felt about Lucy's father as well. And then obviously that's not where that goes, um, but it doesn't doesn't change the rest of that, you know. Um, also. That all being said, him sacrificing himself and leaving his children and his wife alone, maybe not. I don't know. Could you not have found another way? You know? Gotta have that big emotional payoff, David. I guess so. Come on, this is I cinema. Guess so. I guess so. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's. I think there's arguments to be made. thought about that too. Like, was that really the only way? Yeah. But I ah, guess there's... I, I have yeah. to go back and watch it. Maybe, maybe when things maybe, slow down, yeah. we'll have to do a... Uh, a deconstruction of it because just to let you guys sure. know when things actually i was going to talk about that with you did you finish your thoughts on that movie yes so i was going to th- talk about that with you today so let's go ahead while we're live on air i'll pull up our schedule to see but we plan on doing when these movies and shows slow down um, a deconstruction of the hobbit so maybe we could fit in a quiet place too maybe we could fit in a quiet place part one and two Ooh, i don't think we're gonna be able to fit it in before the new one releases but let's see. We can always just do the it? first one. I I don't much. I the, the second one doesn't. I don't okay. really. I don't care so much yeah. about the second one. I've seen it once. I was like, eh, and you know. Well, that was it. You uh, what my kind of idea with the Hobbit is we cover all three movies, but I really do want to do deconstruction, but we don't have to because I know given our current schedule how things are going, I think deconstruction deconstructing each movie will take a while. Yeah. So like we can always just like come back to it when reviewing other things. Like it doesn't yeah. have to be consecutively. Yeah, absolutely. Um but uh next week we have Kingdom of the Ape if we actually want to oh. see that. So we could either do that or we could do the Hobbit. Hmm. I don't know, man. I may watch it. Maybe well, when's that movie come out on Thursday? May tenth. 
Okay. Yeah. Maybe I'll maybe I'll watch it and decide like if it's really worth talking about. Is any does anybody care? I know. I, well, <laughs> I keep hearing from people that every time one of those releases, it always meets I, its I budget like the, or does I, a little better. Yeah, I like the f- the first three well enough, at least from what I remember. Um, but I haven't seen anything in the trailers to where it like makes me want to see it. Like I'm if just, it came on I'm streaming, kind of bored streaming with that. I'd watch it. I'm bored with that style. You know, I love I love the first Planet of the Apes movie, um, and a big part of that. And uh, I, I wish people kind of. So as much as we talk about writing, I, I really wish people pushed more uh, criticism on sort of like style, like stylistic stuff in movies, and the way that you know, we talk about this a lot with television shows where everything just looks the same now. It's all too clean oh, yeah. or cheap looking or whatever. Um, and or a lot it literally of that, just all looks the same. Yeah. Like with the Witcher, uh, the Rings of Power, Wheel of Time, uh, Wheel of Time. You know. Um, and then but I agree with that. Criticizing yeah, style I, there's and and we'll we'll kind of talk about it with with Boy Kills World, um, because there if there's one thing you really can't criticize it for, it's style. Um, it it kind of knows what it is and it it's trying something. Um, whether it fully, I'll I'll tell you. We'll get into it a little bit, but like whether it succeeds or not. But that's that's kind of what I'm getting at is like I, that that specific sort of like. Uh, borderline hyper realistic idea of the whole Planet of the Apes thing is fine, mm-hmm. but we did it for three movies. We've we've done that. Let's do something else. Like uh, for for as much as that um, man who directed that one with uh, Mark Wahlberg back in the nineties, um, Tim Burton, I think was the, directed that. Was that the nineties or was it two thousand? Uh, I want to say it was like if it wasn't the nineties, it was like two thousand two thousand one something like that. Like, yeah, it was really early it was on. Like that. Um, as much as that movie is like not good, at least he was trying something. You know what I mean? Like he was going yeah. for a style. Like one of the re- you you get Tim Burton to direct a movie for you, not only because of the stuff that he's done before, but because he has a very specific vision, um, yeah, a unique style. Yes, and that's like s- just a problem I have with so much stuff now, where it's like it all looks the same. It's so boring. That's what that's what made Lord of the Rings so great is that it had its own style. It was lived in. They, you know, Peter Jackson wanted to treat it like a, like it was our history. You know, historical facts, just yeah. like Tolkien tried. You know, tried to write it, um, and, and it's got to stand out. Yeah, and it's got a style. There's a lot of. It's the same thing with like Shogun, right? Shogun mm-hmm. ha- is very stylistic in the things that it's that it's doing. Um, like all the cinematography. Yeah, the, yeah. Everything. Um, and Austin-ing. there's just not. I don't know. It's just not always there, and I, I just I find that stuff. I start just getting bored. Um, even if I'm like, yeah, that was pretty good or whatever, I'm like, yeah, there just wasn't anything to it though that really made it pop. Um, yeah. so and it depends. It depends on what you're going for. But with a lot of this sort of sci-fi, um, you know, fantasy, whatever, like I need more stylistic stuff in it. Um, I need you to like. Like, I mean, people need to start taking a little more risk with that. Like, give us, like, a 60s yes. or a 70s, a 50s aesthetic for your, your sci-fi. I don't know. Um, That's why I like the something. Batman so much because with Matt Reeves because one of the things I enjoyed about it was the style of it, you know. Yeah. Uh, um, now, whether or not you think he executed that, I do. Yeah. But it's, well, it's, it's different. That's one of the things, like, I, something I want us to do at some point when we have a little bit of extra free time, because I don't know if you've ever seen it, but I want us to go through the Firefly series and watch Serenity. Um, oh, yeah. And because I, I it, that's been sort of on my mind again recently. I'm probably Good about, morning. as soon as I have a little bit of free time, I'm about to watch um, all of it again. Um, Serenity is the movie that I give credit to with me wanting to do filmmaking to some degree. Um, I saw it in theaters. You're in, a big Josh Whedon fan, aren't you? Uh, well, um, you love his style his, of directing, his, his, his writing, his directing. Yeah, L- let's be clear about that. Though I, I think he did get a uh, he got a bad break from all of those people as well, because um, it's like he gets That's thrown how under David the, runs me, y'all. Yeah, that he gets thrown under the bus, but then like all that other stuff that that these people have been, you know, they get away scot free. Basically, it's like. 
Hmm. Okay. I can't. It's not YouTube appropriate, the things David was telling me prior to getting on the live stream today. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah i i want us to do that and um because one firefly's like maybe 10 episodes i can't quite remember but it's it's pretty short and then there's a movie that wraps up the whole thing and i think you'll get a pretty clear um vision of like who joss whedon was um you can see it in avengers but like moving even a little like a, a bit further back and then showing team dynamics and character writing and um, just the way that he did everything. And I, I think it's something you'll see and be like, so much of this is missing today. Yeah. Well, so I mean, much of this. He did, a, he did a great job with uh, Angel and Buffy mm-hmm. and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. So, um, And hey, I personally think his uh, Batman versus Superman was better than that. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, he, let's see. He directed the Avengers too. So yeah, the original and Avengers. Age of yeah, the whole and Age D- of Ultron. D- hit the whole DC thing, you know, that that was such a mess anyway. Like, yeah, there's not much he could have. Yeah, he stepped in to save it. It's not like like him having to catch flack for it is in the same way of Peter Jackson having to catch flack for the Hobbit, given yeah, how agreed. everything went. And not everything everyone does is going to be like a banger. You know what I mean? Like it, it does happen yeah. that you're just like, ooh. You know, and you want to move Except on. Except for to, me. Oh man, yeah. I'll, I'll be honest. Like I, I understand all the controversy and everything, but I miss him in the industry. Um, it's, it, it's not the same at this point. Without yeah. what him did he? What was, what was the controversy around? Um, that? he's, he is one of a few people that was like known to be pretty tyrannical on set. Um, whether or not certain things were said or not, and then the the tone and the attitude at the time, you know, it's like that. Some of that stuff gets gets lost. Um, right. But yeah, lost he, in translation. Listen, it's it's something that a lot of people don't understand. That it's like you're in like if if you're if you have a creative vision for something and you're trying to get that out on screen, and your actors or other people are coming to you and they're they're trying to put their opinion in about certain things. Um, sometimes you're going to be like, hmm, that's interesting. Like, maybe we can try that. And then other times you're going to be like, shut up and do your job. Yep. Please do what I tell you to do. It was like, that's not, like, if they're trying to change stuff or they don't think a character would do this and you're like, no, the character, it's, you know, no different than when we're talking on here and it's like, no, the character, that falls completely in line with what the character would be doing. Like, what you are trying to get me to do would completely change that. Like, it's not, that is not consistent with it. So, I'm I'm sure he was not very nice on set. Like, there's no denying any of that. Um, but he's definitely not the only one. And so it's just crazy that he got pretty much booted from the industry when a lot of these other guys are, like, still kicking back, you know? Um, that whole... As far as I'm concerned, um, and then we'll move on, but as far as I'm concerned, like, the whole, like, Me Too thing, whether it started out, um, per, like, in good faith or not, uh, turned into a way for the changing of the guard to happen, um, and for people mm-hmm. who felt like they deserved to be in uh, the cockpit uh, to get there, um, and in a lot of ways it worked. And look where we are now. <laughs> hmm. And again, it's not a a, a uh, endorsement of the things that were happening or are still happening because believe me, they still are. Uh, it's just a scenario of like. That stuff is definitely still going on. Um, they're just different people in charge now. Yep. You know. And his email is David at. No, I'm yeah, go for it. Email me. I won't respond. Probably I'll just block you. But uh, no, I'm just messing. Uh, all right. Get you. It's definitely still going on because you know we see, you know, even with this, uh, uh, apparently this beef going on between. Uh, what are their names? Drake and Kendrick oh, Lamar. and Kendrick Lamar, bro. Yeah, bro. Drake is a yeah, weirdo. I'll preach. Just keep me up to date. <laughs> yeah. uh, Drake's a weirdo, though. We've all known him yeah. for a long time. Um, I can't really yep. speak to to the rest of that stuff for the most part. Um, I'm only like vaguely familiar with what's going on. Uh, part of me is like, I don't care. <laughs> but yeah, the stuff. Yeah, the stuff with Drake's weird. He's a weirdo. Um, yeah, yeah, much. yeah. You know, there's. Uh, I, see, hmm? I saw that the budget for. The Fall Guy was around eighteen million, and it bombed at the box office. Oh, d- that's crazy, dude! It's only doing two point seven million dollars. Oh man, or dude, are, slightly above two point seven. Million. Are people just not going to the theater? 
Like if it's Dude, not internationally, it bombed like the met hmm. like literally ninety one percent of that came from domestic. I don't think it I don't think it's a lack of people not going. I think it probably, you know, marketing could be involved in this. Um there's so many different things that could be involved. I think to like, let me let me back up some. It potentially could be people not going to the theater in the sense that people's goodwill has been burned. So it's not yeah. a lack of desire from wanting to go to the theater. It's things have been so, such trash. Um, That's that, fair, and stuff's expensive, dude. Like, it's and not it cheap. takes a long time to build that back up. It's going to take yeah. a few years of people. Um, going yeah. you know uh, of solid movies to earn that goodwill back I, but i mean I godzilla am, versus kong did what did that do? right yeah so i mean did we really can't really well. say people aren't going yeah it did 547 million dollars yeah so, yeah prices are definitely getting into kung that. fu panda four 520 ghostbusters only did 195 so, so never yeah mind. it didn't do well <laughs> it's it's yeah i don't know maybe what it is is it's just hard to make those but predictions because i honestly you did it 708 million yeah part two so what is it then is it these smaller films i don't think anybody heard about it dude heard I about the really fall guy hmm. no, I, to... heard heard about uh boy kills world oh well dude it was in theaters for like a week well that yeah because it bombed uh i don't th well i don't know if that really had anything well yeah to be fair like it, i guess godzilla got extended runs but i yeah i don't know i um boy kills world um it's a, okay so i'll i'll set up this and i'll talk about it for a minute before we move on to um the fall guy yeah uh it is definitely not a movie for everyone you know it's already like an a small uh it's like it's from a, south africa uh yeah and um you know, it uh, it's hyper violent. It's kind of got a goofy, dark sense of humor. Um, it's a bit of it's definitely Sam Raimi inspired. He produced it. I thought he directed it, but he only produced it. Uh, okay. So he, but he, you can see his influence in the movie for sure. Um, and so my assumption is is that this was like a project that he helped produce because who the the director maybe some other and i'm just assuming with this um that some of the people involved in it he probably liked and wanted to give them a shot at making a movie and so may yeah i wonder because i wonder about this sometimes with movies if they're like well we know this probably isn't going to be a massive success but it's like a stepping stone for somebody in the industry right um and you know it's and sometimes that can happen and and yeah uh, and honestly, man, like for the most part, it's uh, an all right movie. Um, and, and we know the box office always doesn't tell the truth. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, and I, I mean, I don't know what was the what was what was the um, the budget for it. Eighteen you have that million. Up? Eighteen million. Uh, that's pretty cheap. Yeah. Um, Reported so, and it only made two point seven at the box. So, and who knows, man? Like I, I don't. These things sometimes find second life on streaming. Um, you know, there's lots of, you know, because uh, physical sales aren't as big of a thing anymore. Um, but, right. you know, they have to buy the rights for the streaming. So it's very possible that this comes out, you know, it, it makes uh, a couple million in that week that it's out. And then they uh, sell the rights for the streaming to Netflix or somewhere else. And they're able to kind of make back their money. Um, right. Or now, did close. you think this? Did you think the stunt work in the movie was good? Was it yeah. practical or was uh, it a lot of CGI? No, it's pretty. It's from what now? I was. I don't. I'm not sure. If, it's like, oh man, I don't know 100 percent about the blood effects. Um, I think it's a layer. There is quite a bit of practical work going on in it. Um, and it uh, all. I, I think that some of the choreography is is really good. At least from what I could tell. Um, there's not a whole lot of oh, there's no way that could happen type stuff. There is some of that. Right. It, it unfortunately there's there's one part in particular where like this is the problem with having guns involved in a movie where there's a lot of like physical martial arts and, type and stuff combat. going on. Yeah, where there are just moments where you're like oh, like no, those guys definitely wouldn't miss that much, you know. Uh, that yeah. that kind of stuff. Um, but it, it's it's a little rare and like. 
it's a lot of fun to watch and a lot of the action is really kinetic. So I'm I'm probably being a little forgiving uh, on that regard. Um, but it again, it, when I kind of talk about that like five, six, seven range, um, this definitely falls in there as well. Um, but it's really enjoyable. And compared to as, as of right now, the stuff that we've seen this year, this is ranking higher than a lot of it. Um, and th- this type of movie and this style, this is like right up my alley too. Like this is a lot, these, these small, like, you know, like the raid is one of my favorite movies. You know what I mean? Now it's it, it, from a, from sort of a, uh, you know, the raids a much more serious movie than this for sure. <laughs> But I uh, I love sort of the the martial arts like the hyper violent um, uh, stuff like this. Uh, yeah, and it's just it's it's co- it's Dried cool. World. Yeah, it's got a it's got a really interesting style. It's got a pretty good sense of humor, you know, because he's he's deaf and mute, um, and so he has to read lips. And there's a character in the in the movie who he can't read his lips because the guy is either like mumbling or, uh, you know, they never give you the the real answer. But you know, so when he meets people and he's like talking to them, um, or when when they're uh, when they're talking to him, it is from what I can tell, I think it's pretty consistent. He, you know, he's only able to like hear them when they're actually directly, you know, talking to him. And so oh, if they they're, when he like, when they like turn around it. It, you know, it starts to mute a little bit or, like, you can't quite understand it. But there's this one character that when he when he's talking, the words, he can't read them right, and so he's thinking he's saying other words. And so there's moments in it where, the you know, you're hearing, like, you know, uh, like, I can't remember exactly what, what it was, but it was, like, you know, ap- apple, bees, basket, turkey, you know? Right. And he's like, huh? And he's like, I, I can't read his lips. And then, um, so the guy will be like talking to him, and so when the when he's asking about like, oh, hey, what's the plan for this specific thing that we're doing? And he's getting the information, and then that guy starts talking, and so it's showing like flashes of like, oh, we did this, and then we got to do this, and we got to steal these um, uniforms, and then the other guy starts talking, and it's like a basket with a ham in it and a pineapple, <laughs> or like, you know what I mean? And so there's this this yeah. this good sense of humor that that it has. Um, and uh, yeah, there's there's a few things in it that I'm like, mm, like, uh, not, not but great, it, but but it's not something you wouldn't regret to have seeing at the movie and spend, spending money on. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I think if this is the kind of movie that you're into, you're gonna have a good time watching it. Um, I, nice. I don't I don't think it's gonna um, I don't think it's gonna disappoint you for the most part. There's a few like, and again, this is me. You know how we are. Like, we're we're digging in. We're going the hypercritical route. There's things that like, eh, I wish this had been done differently. Um, there are definitely some things like that in there. Um, but again, like I said, like again, this uh, ungentlemanly warfare, this movie, Arcadian, um, and even the Fall Guy. Like, they fall into that category. That category, yeah, yeah. They fall into that category of like more of this, please. But but then again, like. I, we don't sp- obviously we don't speak for everyone because Godzilla X Kong did all right, yeah. You know, and then like the stuff yeah. that I'm like, yeah, these are these are pretty great. Everyone's like, nah. So I and I keep hoping like this is the kind of stuff that'll find you know second life in places. But then again, I'm also of the opinion that it's like sometimes some of the best stuff is when you're like oh, you've never seen this? And then you get to, like, show that to people, you know? Yeah. And so maybe well, it didn't think, Maybe it didn't do well, but it, it finds, like, new life later on. Yeah, and definitely could, can happen. Um, I think, you know, with Godzilla versus Kong, and but even maybe with the Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, maybe it's going to hit that young demographic more, um, you know, with them. Because that's the only thing I can think of that explain that Godzilla versus Kong movie, man. That's the only thing I can think of, dude. I don't <laughs> like, know, man. Like I work, really I, I work with a lot of younger people, and from what I can tell, a lot of them just don't even go to the movies. You know, mm. like they're just, really? yeah, they're not invested in that. Like mu- music is, you know, well, it's mostly crappy music, um, but music is much more of a thing for them. Um, that's interesting. A lot of man, there's like people. Is this love like how their, did hmm? how did Barbie get? You know, over a billion dollars last year, and and yeah. and Oppenheimer there get close are, to it, and you know, yeah, there there are a lot of, I mean, there are definitely exceptions. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, 
but it, I, yeah, there is definitely and Godzilla minus one. Minus one is an exception. Um, seems like the kind of nerd community definitely came out big for that one, though. You know what dude, I mean? Dude, I remember that when one had... they released that first trailer, dude. And you just hear mm-hmm. it and you're like, oh, yep, yep. oh, I can feel it. And and some there's just stuff that doesn't it doesn't hit for people. And like I said, I mean, uh, there's been plenty of movies that ultimately have been seen um, in as a a uh, when it's looked back on over the years where they're like no that actually was excellent and it's sad that it it uh didn't like do well at the time yeah you know and yeah, again know exactly phys- phys- physical media not being a thing right now definitely hurts that um you know i, I there's i want to push back towards that some you know uh, especially yeah. with stuff that i really like i want to own i want to have a copy of it um but yeah, uh, it's it's Godzilla yeah. People have out to play. Yeah, people have short Godzilla. attention spans. Yeah, that's what it, I think. A lot of it comes down to that. They're just like, eh, I don't know if I. Re-. And it, and it sucks that like going to the theater isn't a more streamlined experience. You know, like I don't want to sit through twenty five minutes of trailers. Um, you know, I don't want to pay twenty five dollars for a small coke. Um, yeah. the experience is not. Something has to change with that. Yep. The costs have to change. Something's got to happen with that in and order the, for the it quality to of the movie sure. and the costs. One yeah. of the two. So we'll see. I mean, like, it is always really interesting looking at, at the numbers. Uh, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is tracking to earn between one hundred and thirty and one hundred and forty-five million dollars at the box office opening weekend. The film had a wow. hundred and sixty million dollar budget. Now, to be fair, the Fall Guy was tracking to earn like north of eighty-five million or whatnot. Yeah. Um, or maybe more than that. Maybe maybe it was in the hundreds too. Uh, but it only made sixty. It may only excuse me. It only made twenty seven million mm-hmm. at the box office. So interesting. We won't know. I mean, you look at Godzilla versus Kong. I could definitely see a route for Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. It's just yeah, man. Yeah, maybe people are really looking forward to it. It's it's hard for me to tell now though, dude, because like I just don't. I'm not around people that are really all that interested in that stuff. Like that's not what they're spending their time doing. Yeah, they don't they don't have like an interest in that like you know, I did at their age, so I am yeah I don't know, it's really weird. Yeah. All right. Well, well, the Fall Guy had a budget of between 115 and what was it like 130 or 150 million dollars, and so far it's made 66 million. Okay. Well, we'll see. So uh, you know those those extra um. Uh, the following week weeks are important for that for sure. Yep. So, all right. I well, it, I hope it at least breaks it even. Yeah, Joseph. I've been talking enough. I want to hear you start with Fall Guy. I want to hear what you thought of it. Man, I think you know, he said it great at. earlier. It's a, it's a fine film. Um, there's, I think, a really, it, it's it definitely took on more than what the trailer trailers led me to believe it was going to take on. Um, it's a it's a rom com action flick. Uh, and you know, so you have the romance part, the comedy part, but it's also meta or fourth wall breaking, which is fine. Yeah. Um, I think you know a lot of the jokes that necessarily always land with me, and I think for me, it's if you want to be satirical and meta, because I I do like. Let me back up for a second. I do like David uh, Leach. Is that how you pronounce his name? Uh, I think it is. But he directed Nobody. Um, I want to say, or his hands were involved. Oh uh, in yeah, the, the re- he references nobody in this at the beginning. Yes, yeah, yeah. So he was a producer on Nobody. Excuse me, a producer, not a director, but producer. Um, and so he also did Bullet Train, and he did Hobbs and Shaw. Never oh, seen that stuff. Interesting. Man. Yeah, there's definitely he did that. Deadpool two, Deadpool two, okay. Atomic Blonde, Deadpool one. Um, so yeah, I, uh, that that makes a lot of sense now that you say that. So like I, I enjoyed the at, I enjoyed the movie, um, definitely a movie I would say hey go to the theater grab some popcorn yeah. you know enjoy it it's fun uh, not all the jokes land I think if you're gonna do these meta jokes you know I think they need to tie in um, to the to narrative more and not just be done for their own sake um, like kind of, you remember when it went split screen. Um, yes, and they're kind of talking about it at that point. Yeah, that didn't really land for me. I thought it was really. I thought it was cute. Like I didn't think it. Yeah, you, you did. 
Um, I, I can see, and it could just be a subjective thing. I did enjoy. Well, I think that they have really good chemistry together. Yes, so that's, that's what say. that's what sells it for me more than anything. Um, I think the script itself isn't all that spectacular. No, but Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt punch it up. Yeah. Oh, they're a great. Few notches. Well, they they're they are excellent actors, um, and. Uh, Ryan Gosling, you know, I've always been a, I've been a fan of that dude for a long time. Um, it's just like the dude is extremely handsome, and yet somehow you watch his movie and you're you get trapped in there thinking, oh yeah, this is totally believable, but yeah. no woman's interested in it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That she wouldn't, you know, and that um, he could just be like a doofus and stuff like that. Like, but the thing that I, I'm sorry, thing, his name I'm isn't sorry. Ryan Gosling. His name is Ken. Excuse me. <laughs> the thing that I I really like about um, the the movie again is that it's like it it's not complicated, you know. It's yeah. It's a pretty simple story. It's got a nice little twist at the end that's not like over the top or like so like it's not eye rolling. You're just like, oh, that is interesting. Like nice. Like I can definitely. A lot of what it does, it's like pretty believable. There's definitely those moments where you're like, mm, I'm like I don't know about that. Um, or like it, it is sort of like, uh, you know, you could probably take it one way or another. Like there's the, I, you know, I guess we're spoiling some stuff, but, um, there's the, the part where he has the, uh, the gun with the blanks in it and the guy gets a hold of it and he shoots him and he acts like he's like getting hit and like falls over. And the guy's like, well, I guess I got him. And then like he moves on, you know? And I'm, I'm kind of like, yeah. okay, yeah, I, I was like, I kind of like that. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't know if that guy would have, uh, would have fallen for that, you know? Um, yeah maybe it's like in the moment you could argue that it's like he wasn't you know he was doing that and like moving on he's like got him um <laughs> i know what you mean dude i uh I, I think another aspect of this movie that i really enjoyed was how the pr lady was kind of the villain yep um yeah 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 i was like that makes a pretty lot good, of sense pretty good i yeah <laughs> i like uh a lot of the, the stunt work um and again like uh i just i enjoy Mo- whether it ends up being great or not like i enjoy most of the stuff that uh, ryan gosling is, is in and it's pretty much the same for emily blunt um same and i enjoy dude all the practical effects and yeah. them shooting on location it's actually a real set it's not um cgi uh the uh, the attempt to do something new but you know yeah, again, just, this isn't anything that's gonna you know uh it's not going to blow you away. Transform you. Yeah, it's not going to blow, blow you away. away. But it's but it's, it's a, a fine movie. Yeah, it's it's fun. Um, I, I you know I think it deserves definitely uh, a little more um, fanfare than I think it's probably gotten. I, I love the stuff with the dog. Um, <laughs> yeah. All of that stuff is is pretty great. Um, and I and this is the thing, man. It's like these 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 wacky scenarios, whether they're like fully believable or not. Like the whole scene where with the dog where he's trying to get to karaoke and it's like you know she's at karaoke doing the whole thing and you're just like come on man like finish this up so you can like i miss that in 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 movies dude i I feel like that is not that sort of um tension and uh being like like rooting for the hero or whatever so often nowadays i'm like i feel like that's that's just not a thing anymore like i don't do that anymore you know i also enjoyed kind of they kind of go against the whole uh woman boss toxic masculinity thing in the movie Mm -hmm. did you pick up on that a little bit and like they don't treat emily blunt as if she's somehow so much better than ryan gosling yes like they're just characters for character's sake you're they're not sacrificing their co-workers at the expense of the female or they're not sacrificing the female at the expense of the male you know what i mean It, it helps too that like when they first started working together at the beginning of the movie you know she was just a com uh, a camera operator and then he's a stunt man and then the sort of inciting incident happens and then she, her career just continues like it's not it's not a situation of like oh she was so good and he was terrible that you know these things happened it's like a something tragic happens um he can't move on and she does to a degree yeah. um and then um you know by the end they're actually kind of equals again. Like he owns his yep. own business. She still like, you know, she has like a successful career. Um, yeah. It's kind of interesting to see that where it's like, nobody's getting like thrown under the bus in the yes. movie. Like they're, yeah, they're just they're treated not like characters. Yeah. They're not sacrificing the male lead for the female lead a la Barbie, mm-hmm. or at least trying to in Barbie. Um, yeah. It's really interesting the way that that works. It is. And I liked how they leaned into the, 
I again, I do enjoy the fact that they went to, leaned into the satirical aspect, the over the top aspect of the stunts and and everything going on. Um, but I just thought things should have flowed more with the script in that scenario, like mm-hmm. with these meta jokes and everything, and the the comedic aspect. Now, Ryan Gosling and Emily definitely um, helped some of those jokes land. Where if, if it was other actors, I'm not sure they would. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're, both of them are seasoned enough at this point that um, even if they don't end up working for you, like they're, uh, it's got a better chance <laughs> than yes. with a lot of other people, yeah. Um, and like I said, I do. I think that they have like excellent chemistry in this. It's it's just believable, and and that's all. Mm-hmm. You, that's where you got to get to. You just have to you got to make me believe that the two of them uh, have this actual relationship. Um, and exactly. Yeah. And I enjoyed the fact that it's, you know, about what goes on behind the scenes mm-hmm. in a movie. And there's things going on behind the scenes that you're getting to see yourself. So, yeah. But um, I, do, I re- I'm trying hard not to spoil it because yeah, I want people to go see it. I agree. Um, yeah, I won't, I, you know, I won't say too much else about it. Um, but uh, it's a lot of fun. I, I like the third act a lot. Um, yes. You know. If anything, it, it, they could have cut down the time a bit. It, uh, yeah, again, I, the those, pacing is a meta l- jokes. Mm-hmm. I think you know there's a lot. There's some filler they could have cut out to where you get it under the two hour mark, and maybe you have this at an hour and forty five, an hour and thirty, and it's a much better movie. Yeah, it could have been a little tighter for sure. Um, yeah. I wouldn't disagree with that at all. And I feel like we've been saying that a lot with regarding a lot of movies, but again, I really enjoy David Leach. I think he does. Um, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, if I'm not, forgive me. I'm not the, the when, best with that. Wh- when, are, when are we getting Nobody Part Two? Ooh, who's also a producer on Violent Night? That makes a lot of sense. Interesting, yeah. And he, he was also producer on your favorite movie last year, uh, John Wick Chapter Four. Oh well, you know we we can't win them all. <laughs> Nobody uh, Two movie. Let me see. Let me. Let me hit the book of truth and, and see what it says. Yeah, I'm. Right. I feel like we've been waiting a long time for that. Yeah, so it's expected to be out in 2025 at the earliest, but there's no uh, official release date yet. However, David Leach has confirmed that the script is being written and the goal is to start filming filming next year. So. Awesome. Well. Do you have you want to say anything about Fall Guy? I, it's definitely uh, worth watching. I think everything that I've talked about, like the that movie and the other two movies that I, the, that we talked about earlier, like, I, I think they're definitely worth a watch. Um, Agreed. I, I think that depending on the kind of stuff that you like, um, like Arcadian's already out on on streaming. I think you can buy it on um, Amazon for a few bucks uh, to watch it on streaming. Uh, or if you have a Shutter account, it's on Shutter. Um, so you can do that. Um, Boy Kills World will be out, uh, I imagine, on streaming and all that stuff pretty soon because it had a really limited run uh, in theaters. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Fall Guy, go see it in the theater. It's definitely a lot of fun. Um, it, it feels like a pretty good date movie. Um, oh, definitely a good date movie. You know? And, uh, yeah. It's, Jenna could bring Whoopa and <laughs> they could go see it. Uh, so it's it's definitely uh, definitely worth, worth your time. Yeah. Um, I think all of these are to different degrees, depending on kind of what you're into. Um, and uh, yeah, man, um, pretty pretty well, pleased. So- I, it's nice that there's some stuff that is sort of because I was filling out my letterbox thing yesterday, trying to like mm-hmm. get caught up or whatever um, of where I am right now, and I want to like go back and catch up on some stuff from earlier this year. Um, even though there was like there was a lot of garbage earlier this year, man, just stuff that's like ugh. Dude, I saw um, the bricklayer on some streaming service the other day. I was oh, like, I need to add that. <laughs> Don't watch that. <laughs> that did technically come out this year, right? Did we decide that? Yeah, yeah, okay. that's what we decide on. Even though on the streaming platform, it's it funny. Says 23. It says 2023. There's another movie, too, that we watched and reviewed that said 2023. I'm like, that's a lie. Oh, did I put Rebel Mood Part 2 on there? I think I forgot to do that. I'll have to go back and add a few. Um, I was just trying to get it, you know, in a good place. And anyway, um,. Actually, that's how I found Arcadian too. Was that I was typing in something and that came up, and I was like, "Oh yeah," I was like, "That kind of I was kind of interested in that," so I ended up watching it. Um, nice. 
but yeah, you know. Um, yeah, if you guys ever get around to, to watching any of these, let us know how you, you feel about them, your thoughts, your feelings, your opinions, whatever. Um, we would definitely love to, to hear what you guys think. Um, definitely. So, Joseph, do you have anything else you want to add? So Yeah, so I guess next week, do you want to do Kingdom of the Apes, or do you want to say primarily The Hobbit and then maybe mm. Kingdom of the Apes? Probably Hobbit. I'll probably watch okay. Kingdom. I don't know... What? I'm not sure if I'm gonna have if I'm gonna be able to watch Kingdom or not. It really okay. just depends on if my I, movie theater's playing it and if I have the time. I'm not as super long as that's the case. About it, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Do not you know? like you are Furiosa, Mad Max. Uh, that's like in two weeks, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, all right. That's all what right. I was thinking. I'm like, I don't. I'm not really passionate for Kingdom of the Ape. I'm. Or Mad Max, Furiosa. I'm thinking maybe we can just do The Hobbit to round out May <laughs> and in that that first week of June. And then, because I'm sure, sure if we actually do a deconstruction, we probably won't even finish it by then. Because um, I'm talking about I really want to do a, a frame-by-frame type Hobbit? deal. Yeah, The Hobbit, yeah. All three movies. Just oh, when we have slow time. Oh, man. You're trying to put me to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it would be good because we could also compare and contrast it to the Rings of Power. Um, um, but okay. sure. Um, and then we got June tenth. We have Star Wars: The Acolyte, and we can stop there if Woof. we're still not done with the Hobbit. And then from there, yeah, we could, we'll just do episode one and two. Then from there, we're only covering House of the Dragon. Oh man, at least something decent's on the horizon. And then right after House of the Dragon, you know what we have? Uh, Borderlands. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that movie does not look good. It does not it look looks good. Like crap. I've heard somebody say uh, s- that they uh, like the trailer, and I was like, Joseph, just say okay, <laughs> that's good. Yeah, yeah. There are definitely there are definitely moments where I'm just like, mm, yeah, cool, man. Glad you liked it, or glad you're, <laughs> you know. Yeah, hey, and, and that's fine. Sheesh. Like, if somebody enjoys stuff like that that, you know that there's nothing wrong with enjoying bad movies as again as we always say as long as you recognize the flaws yeah yeah you don't you know if they don't really bother you that's fine it's like we're just here just trying to we're just talking yeah yeah trying to you know push some buttons or something um (laughs) Well, thank you guys so much uh, for listening to this episode. I think, oh, before I forget, Joseph, we definitely need, at some point, we this can be put on a week where like we don't have a whole lot going on. We definitely should do the Snyder versus Bay thing. Like, yes. and make it like a whole episode and just kind of yes. talk through it. Uh, I, know, I, w- I don't think I'd go back and watch both of their filmographies for it, but there's definitely a few movies in like Michael Bay's uh, filmography that I would like to go back and like, just we should what we should do is we on. should we should put out what we think their top two or three movies are have the troll room vote on it like either on discord or youtube or wherever yeah and you know whichever movie from both of them get voted oh to the top. no that's Compared. so dangerous <laughs> bro i'm not watching Zack snyder's <laughs> justice league again i will never watch that movie again <laughs> Dude, I won't either. That's a bad uh, idea. Yeah, maybe we just talk about it. Just put out a poll to see what they, you know, see if you can get a who has the better filmography or something from the two of them. Yeah. You know, see what people yeah. think. Um, because there's some stuff in Snyder's collection I, I really have no interest in ever seeing again. Um, so uh, I feel you on that. All right, y'all. Well, we're going to end it there. Um, so thank you guys so much for. Uh, tuning in for episode 171 of the underground we'll be back next week and until then y'all take it easy see ya